Hi, this is Brian Wilson with BFW Classroom, and today we're going to look at how to use text-to-image in Adobe Express to create a modern version of the Shield of Achilles from the Iliad. So, we have a brand new item here. The size is a one-to-one, -one, so it's a 1080 by 1080. Um, you can pick any one you want to, but for this project, I like to use a one-to-one. -one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use a grid template here. Now, to start this item, I, I have a project where I've asked students to look at the Shield of Achilles. We've read it in class, and I wanted them to create their own version of it. So to create a grid, a nine by nine grid, you can use this to begin with. Now, it has all the padding, the outlays, everything's fine, it's spaced well. The only problem is if you start with this, you do need to do a couple of things. So like, first of all, if you take this picture, or if you take the grid, if you take this picture and want to change it, you are only gonna be able to upload or use the actual Adobe library. If you want to add a picture using the generative fill or the, the text to image, you have to click on media, click text to image, and then start from there. So now what you do is you click text to image, click square, it'll generate here, and then you type in what you would like. So in the assignment, students should have already generated text for this, but I'm going to type something in here. So I'm going to put like students at school dancing and having fun. Now, what's interesting about this is as it actually generates the image, uh, you'll have a couple of options. So it'll have certain styles if you don't give it one. And so let's say I'll pick this one and I can put it here and then basically use it as a hold to get rid of the background. And so now I can just make copies of this as I want. So if I just make a copy here, I can go like this. And if I use my guides, so the purple line, the pink line there tells me the middle, the one at the top says the edge. Uh, these ones on the top and the bottom or the middle of it show it lining up. Make another one, stick this one over here. And then you can see there's guides, so it's equally distributed. It's all where I need it to be. So now that I have these three, let's say I group them together and I copy them. It will lay them on top of the other ones. I can do it again. And again, you can use your keyboard, uh, control C, control V to go ahead and do this. Um, you can click the create collage um, and do that. And they'll do some odd things like regenerating that um, or removing those and moving around. I don't recommend doing that once you get them all done. Um, if you highlight all of them and click create collage, it'll do the three parter. So let's go back to this very first one. It still has the text to image box open here. And so what you can do is if you'd like to change the way it looks, you can pick theme and give it a different version of it by clicking generate and then going down here, looking at your four panel options and then pick one of these instead. So you can pick that. Now, what if I want to change one of my other pictures? So let's say, um, so a student painting in class. Because again, this is supposed to be a hold in of nine images from um, a student's daily life. So here we have this one and you can swap it in. And as you click, it'll do that. If you don't like the four that it gives you, you can click load more. It'll give you some other ones. And again, with this as well, you can go back to the stuff at the top and then change theming elements, uh, movements, change the style of it. So like, let's say you want to make it steampunk. Um, let's see what it generates for you. So you have the same kind of movement theme or style throughout all of them. If you click these buttons, it'll help you do that. So again, a little bit of a motif. It's a, it's a little off, but it's still there. And so you would just go through all nine of these and students would take their original writing of the nine scenes that they wrote for a modern version of the shield and then drop them into this and have a little bit of a reflection in class afterwards. Did their writing actually generate the kind of image they wanted to or was it not correct? Um, 
Some of the other things you can do with this too is you can actually do um, removing. You can do some removing tools if you wanted. Uh, be mindful if you do that. Like you have to be careful as you click, or you might accidentally get rid of stuff that you want. Um, you can you can undo by clicking the reverse button, and then what you can also do is generative fill. So what I can do here. Oh no! So hold on a second. This is where it's important. Click the image you want. So there, I'm clicking this one, and then do generative fill and. Uh, and what I'm going to do is make it a digital tablet. And I want to change what that student is using to something different. And down here, it will give me some different results as I go through it. So you can just make sure to check to see. So it has a little bit of um, hallucination going on there. So I might need to like grab some other parts to go with it to make sure it works. Um, and then you click done and then it changes that stuff inside of it. So this is, again, these are examples. As you go through, you might need to change your iterations and, and go through it again, and then just make sure it fixes. Again, this is Brian Wilson with BFW Classroom. I hope this helped you learn something about Adobe Express. Again, click the like button and subscribe or check out one of my other videos showing you how to use Adobe Express or Google items in your classroom. Good luck and enjoy.